Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy, be In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary or Virgin, or the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive Seated at the right hand and of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from your God? And that, you are, are, and that you are not your own. For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, give glory in your body. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means Teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. 
He first found his own brother, Simon, and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's so important that we recognize that every one of us was created for a purpose. God loved us into being and created us for that purpose. And that purpose does not go away no matter what we do about it and no matter our circumstances. It is also important to realize that God builds into us a drive to satisfy our own personal desires, quest for power, wealth, honor, and even pleasure. But we need to be careful because often these desires and quests shroud that which we know is our true calling. Rather than pursuing our calling, we may rationalize our way out of it by protecting what's familiar with us, what's comfortable to us. Sometimes it takes a devastating situation to shake us awake and to show us the path we're heading down is not a path that brings about our purpose. In the end, I'm convinced that all of us long for two things. We all want to love and we all want to be loved, which, by the way, is God's longing for us. So our purposes, the ones we were created for, those purposes ultimately bring about a world where our longings are satisfied, and it's called the kingdom of heaven. When you read today's gospel, John the Baptist had a purpose. His purpose was to prepare us and show us the Lamb of God. It was Jesus' calling, his purpose, to be the Lamb who would be the sacrificial offering which brings us all life. But there is something hidden in this story that is important. If we read it the way I originally read it, it seems as though the newly appointed disciples had finally found the Messiah. And it seemed like a foregone conclusion that they would go about their purpose. We might be led to that conclusion because Andrew in this story says Simon Peter says to Simon Peter, "We found the Messiah." But Andrew and his companions did not find the Messiah. They were following John the Baptist, and it was John who pointed out Jesus, the Lamb of God. So Andrew and his companion began to follow Jesus. And while they were following Jesus, Jesus turned and asked, what are you looking for? Now, Jesus probably knew they were looking for the same things we all look for. They were looking for a way out of their struggles. They were looking for their purpose. They were looking for someone who might bring peace on the earth and get rid of evil. But the apostles did not answer the question. Rather, they said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? And notice they called him Rabbi, teacher. Why not Lord? Why not recognize that Jesus was God? This story isn't about Jesus being found. It's about Jesus going out and finding and calling his disciples to work with him, just as he finds and calls us. Jesus then said to them, Come and you will see. You know as well as I do, knowing of someone and knowing who they are is two different things. The best way you can know who people are and really get into a relationship is to go where they stay. Go to their homes, for example, and experience their lifestyle and know their stories. So often we fail to understand people because they don't stay with them. The apostles stayed with Jesus that day, and afterwards, after entering an encounter, a relationship with Jesus, they began to realize the importance of who Jesus is and ultimately their own purposes. Jesus found them and invited them into his world, and they began to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. It was then they accepted the call. Peter, the other character in this story, was also called. 
He had a very special role to play in God's plan. Jesus was renamed from Simon to Cephas. Cephas meaning the rock. The name Cephas is transliterated in Greek to Petros, and in English we call him Peter. As we know, it is Peter who is called to lead Jesus' church. Peter was to be the rock of our faith. In our second reading, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians talks about how the Holy Spirit dwells within us, how we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Paul, who was originally no friend of the followers of Jesus, on his way to be persecuted, or on his way to persecute more Christians, was knocked down and was brought back up, blinded, and sent to Damascus, was taught by a disciple, Barnabas, and then Paul became the most prolific teacher of our faith. Jesus sought Paul and then called him into his work. In this letter today, Paul tells us, whenever we sin against our own bodies, we are sinning against God who is in us. If we could look into a mirror and not only see ourselves, but also see the Holy Spirit staring back at us, we might treat ourselves a little differently and realize, although pleasure is good, it does not provide the ultimate longing of loving and being loved. There was a woman, Hannah, who was thought to be barren. She was being criticized because God had not seen favor in her and had not provided her a child. After praying in the temple, promising God that she would dedicate her child to God, she bore a son, Samuel. In our first reading, it's clear Samuel had a purpose. His purpose was to be a prophet. But first, he was awakened, and it took Eli to help Samuel recognize he was being called by God. Sometimes, it takes people in our own lives who we encounter to show us that God is speaking to us. Ultimately, Samuel would take the place of Eli, his mentor, and become a great prophet. During my preordination retreat last summer, our retreatant father, Simeon Gallagher, talked to us about how St. Irenaeus was an incarnational theologian. He believed that when God created, God did not finish his creation. He wanted us to have a hand in it. Irenaeus believed creation to be an ongoing thing. Father Simeon went on to say that sin, according to Irenaeus, was a turning to God and saying, leave me alone. I don't want to go through these struggles. I don't want to leave this comfortable position I'm in. But our sinfulness does not alleviate our purpose, nor does our sin change God and his will for our lives. All that sin does is preclude us from being awake to the fact that God loved us first, created us, and called us to do some kind of work that God knows will bring us joy in our lives. And sometimes for our own good and the good of all creation, God will call us in our sleep, awakening us to God's desires, even if that awakening requires that we struggle through difficulties. 25 years ago, if you had asked me where would I be in the year 2021, the last thing on my mind would have been to be a deacon in the Catholic Church. First, I didn't consider myself Catholic back then, although baptized a Catholic. And at that time, I was slowly coming back to the idea that God actually exists. Prior to that, I considered myself an atheist. I was in a spiritual sleep. And also 25 years ago, I had an experience that was very, very difficult. And as far as I was concerned, was devastating. It was an experience that I thought at the time had no purpose. If God did exist, it made no sense to me. Why God would have me go through this very troubling time, I couldn't understand. I would never want to go through these difficult times again, but in retrospect, I am sure that if this devastating part of my life had not occurred, I would still be struggling for the truth of who I am. And look at our nation today. Right now, we are currently going through a struggle. All of us want freedom and prosperity and peace and security and justice. 
Yet because we as a nation haven't come to grips with our purpose, our morality, there's this tension. And because we don't yet know how to deal with this tension, tempers flare. Unruly gangs take advantage of the situation, and we end up witnessing the kinds of riots that we saw this summer throughout our country, and then most recently in our capital. Now, I tell you all this because this Sunday, we are being called out of a sleep. Our nation is being called out of a sleep, and as hard as it may seem to, to be, God would not allow these difficulties to happen for no purpose. Creation groans as it brings birth to the kingdom of God. God is trying to tell each and every one of us that we have a hand in the struggle to bring about the kingdom of God, not only in our lives, but in our nation and in the world. Just as Samuel was awakened to his purpose, just as James and Peter were called to their purpose, as Paul was knocked down by the brilliant light of the resurrected Jesus. He followed his call. And we, all of us, are being called to have a hand in creation. Here's a suggestion. Every morning, look in the mirror. Imagine God who dwells in you, looking back at you. And then tell God, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Now let's proclaim our profession of faith, I believe, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. God calls us to fulfill His will. Let us pray confidently to our Father, knowing that He wishes His people to intercede for the world. For Pope Francis, that he will continue to lead his church with apostolic service and authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians making spiritual retreats, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the children who have died from abortions in our nations, that they may rest in peace in the loving arms of our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of racial discrimination in our country as we celebrate the birth of Martin Luther King, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are not able to receive the precious body and blood of our Lord during this time, that they may feel his presence within them through prayer let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and who are dying, and for those names written in the St. Jude, Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Gwen Sullivan, Lupe Zarate, Laverne Danilo, Francis Friel, Gilbert Ortego, 
Becky Griffith, Deacon Bill Schuster, Maricela Pena, Constance Hooper, Michael Ruwalt, Eduardo Aguila Desana, Martin Gazarek, Lloyd Lee, Deacon Carl Thelen, Dolores Lynch, Lois Lacey, Ty Oaks, Richard Navarro, Pillar Schenkel, John Romerman, Mary Beal, and Annetta Owens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Connie Buntley, whom this Mass is intended for, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we make these prayers to do your will, accept us in our beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Shout joyfully to God all you on earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Hear now all you who fear God. While I declare what the Lord has done for me. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we have free fruit of the earth and work of human hand. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we have free fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His image. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice, sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift it up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without it we acclaim. Holy, 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 Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly in his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, as to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, o Lord, your church but throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our bishop, and all the clergy. I remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. He was this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
time for communion. Those who would like to receive the communion on the tongue, please you may come up after the Mass to the center aisle. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am to be that in my room. But only he said the word and my soul shall be saved. Dicit Andreas, Simoni Fratri, Yeah. 
The Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart, and I unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Please we remain seated. Pope Francis on World Children's Day said the following, every child needs to be welcomed and defended, helped and protected from the moment of their conception. As we prepare to remember January 22nd, the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, we will pray as a community a novena, nine days, praying a Hail Mary at every Mass from January 14th to January 22nd. We pray this with the intention for the full restoration of legal guaranteed li right to life. Let us pray. At, for the intercession of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. We have a new adult study beginning in February called The Search, and it is presented by Formed. You can find details on the Adult Studies page of our website and on our bulletin. Formed has excellent Bible studies, kids shows, and other Catholic media. You can use the link on our website to get a free subscription. Thank you to everyone who helped organize the HOPE event last Saturday night. We appreciate all the volunteers and ministers who participated in that event. If you are looking for a way to help those in need, our People Helping People Furniture Ministry and the AMA Food Pantry are both requesting donations. See the website or bulletin for details. As we prepare to remember January 22nd, the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, we will pray a community novena as we have done. We will be mailing out our end of year statements and could use help with this bulk mailing on January 21st after the 8.30 a.m. mass. If you can help, please contact Rose Tuck in the business office. Our offices will be closed tomorrow, Monday, January 18th, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. However, we will still be having our regularly scheduled daily masses. Please note, if you would like to make an offering 
Uh, you will notice we have money boxes by the baptismal font on the two transepts, and we thank you for your continued support of our parish. Please. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ and Lord. She Yeah. Mm -hmm.